Okay, another term or another type of pneumonia I'd like to uh, introduce and it's aspiration pneumonia. Unfortunately, this kind of pneumonia continues to occur in, especially in the hospital. So again, uh, from the name, the uh, cause here or the etiology is aspiration. And then uh, that means that the mechanisms of uh, that protect against aspiration is impaired. So the kind of patient that will be um, mainly patient with NG feeding, NG tube feedings, patient who had altered level of consciousness, are the comatose or lethargic, or especially after post-op or any kind of procedure that involves uh, anesthesia. We need to pay a very careful um, attention and, and an assessment for this kind of patient. Okay, the other type that I'd like to introduce is the opportunistic pneumonia. The opportunistic pneumonia from the name basically, okay, let, let, let me explain what happens. So we have, here's a microorganism invasion, invading a patient with a normal immunity. The immune system will react to this microorganism, I'll take care of it. Now some reactions, or depends on response, may kill these uh, microorganisms or expel them out of the body or engulf them and make them inactive. Now these microorganisms when become inactive they basically are waiting for an opportunity that's what we call them opportunistic an opportunity is where the immune system is pretty low and that's when become inactive an example of that this is a patient with HIV after a long time of you know having HIV and having a high viral load now the immunity is, is low so this microorganism now it's a chance for them it's an opportunity for them to come back and become active now one of the most common uh, type of opportunistic pneumonia is actually what patients with HIV experience and uh, it's a fungal infection basically it, it's a pneumonia that's caused by a fungal uh, and it, it is very common and it's actually uh, cause um, high mortality rate um, a, a significant percentage, percentage of patients with AIDS they experience or die from this particular type of pneumonia now, just, just on the side, just there's a difference between HIV positive and AIDS. HIV, HIV positive means that the patient has the, uh, the virus, and, but you know the incubation period for the HIV is a very, very long, 5, 10 years, sometimes 20 years with medication. AIDS, we diagnose that when the patient's immunity is really low. Now, their CDC and T helpers are very low. So this kind of uh, fungal infection, it, it really causes uh, a pneumonia in healthy people. It's most likely you see it with patients who are immunocompromised, and the most common group is the patient with HIV. It's not infectious, so there's no isolation required. It's really more of a fungal. The drug of choice is amphostrin B. That continues to be the best drug of choice, which is an antifungal for this kind of infection. But uh, the notes that I want you to know is, is that the PCP is the most common uh, or the most classical uh, example of opportunistic pneumonia that's caused by fungal among patients with HIV or AIDS. It used to be called Carini before. And that's the way it looks under the microscope. Now the severity of pneumonia, uh, again, no memorization, I want you to take the concept. Basically the more risk factors or the more diseases the patient has, the worse the condition. Also, there's some bar statistics. We know that male uh, experience worse pneumonia than female, but as also the comorbidities. So, if the patient has is the patient healthy when they get pneumonia, like young and healthy, we treat them as outpatients. You know, take azithromycin, stick it orally at home for four or five days, and that's it. But a patient who has a COPD, for example, or a patient has COPD and diabetes, or a patient has lung cancer, they uh, the severity of pneumonia, of course, will be worse. And I want to introduce the the um, concept of a prognosis. Prognosis means um, the worseness, basically, uh, of the um, conditions. That means that it may take longer for it to heal, or it could mean that there will be some complications for these conditions. Um, this patient, when they have severe pneumonia, also you will see more significant uh, physical exams. So it's not going to be only cough and fever. The patient may show wheezes, may show diminished breathing sounds. Uh, breathness, dyspnea. So the more the more findings, that mean the more the severe the case, and also that will show in the lab. So if, uh, severe pneumonia, for example, will increase the white blood cells significantly, or will leads to 
uh, show what we call bands. I'll talk about that later um, and so on. So I want to take the concept again that the more, the worse, the more conditions. So here's a 30 years old with febrile a fever here. He is white blood cells elevated but not significantly versus a 65 years old female who is diabetic when she get pneumonia may show febrile and also white blood cells will be high versus an 82 years old male who is diabetic and COPD or, and also so it will show more symptoms and worse cases. Now the type of pneumonia, I'll talk about two types of pneumonia basically and, and uh, it depends on the de the place where they acquire the pneumonia. The first one would when a patient get it from the community before they come to the hospital and that's uh, the uh, clinical definition of that if the patient shows the symptoms or the onset of the symptoms it, within two days of admission. Now, if, if that if that's not the case, if it shows after two days or 48 hours, then it would become, uh, then it would be considered a, um, hospital acquired. The patient got it within, um, while they're hospitalized. And that has to do with the incubation of the microorganism. So we decided on 48 hours 